today uh, I will spoke about the uni, the right indication uh, and the wrong indication and how to avoid the failure. So the uni from its beginning has been developed because they change the shape, they change the material. And so the result actually, I was speaking with Christophe, the result after 10 years of the implant survive is over 90%. So this means that when you follow the right indication, you will have really good result. So I want to start showing this case. This was um, a lady that the first thing she asked me, I was still playing golf. So don't do something that can be affect my game. And uh, at that time, uh, um, the orthopedic uh, Rizzoli Orthopedic Institute developed this kind. Uh, it's I don't want to, I don't like to say uni because this is for a special indication for focal cartilage damage. So this means that if you have a deformation of the condyle or, or the subchondral bone is in a bad condition, you cannot put this implant. So it's a cementless implant and uh, uh, I remember when I went to see uh, Marcacci was the inventor of uh, this implant, he was doing by arthroscopy. And uh, okay, I said, you do by arthroscopy, I will never do because uh, I think that to see the right position uh, with a mini open is much better than by arthroscopy. Anyway, I did it this 18 years ago and the patient, the lady is still in a good healthy condition and she still play golf. So I think that the indication, but this is very restricted indication only when you have very focal cartilage damage. So the uni implant is a resurfacing procedure and uh, we can resurface one of the three compartments. Uh, we can resurface the femoral, tibial, side, medial, or lateral, or only the patellar femoral joints. From its beginning, the uni uh, we, has had a, a huge evolution. And I think that the failure, okay, according to the wrong indication, but was also the wrong shape of the femoral component uh, and the all poly uh, tibial plate. Here we can see an interesting uh, the idea that McIntosh uh, exposed in the 1954 and in Italy was re starting doing again, the name was Unispacer, and the concept was, I put something in, in between in the line joint to separate the damage of the femur from the tibia. Uh, in the beginning, the patient feel good, but after two, three years, the results are very bad. So this kind of procedure has been stopped. Um, so the main reason, uh, as I told you, uh, of the failure was the polyethylene tibial implant and the wrong indication. Of course, now with the cross-link polyethylene and antioxidant polyethylene, the survival of the polyethylene is much, much longer. And also the shape of the femur condyle is not straight anymore, but follow the convergence of the femoral condyle. So which are the benefits of the uni? We preserve the ligament. And this is important because if we have, and, and maybe in, um, we will discuss about this, if you have a failure of the cruciate because the knee is a pivot inch uh, joint. So these are important to control the rolling and the sliding of the femoral condyle on the tibial plate. And uh, it's a mini invasive surgery, can be done in 30 minutes when you are 
a good surgeon, you have a loss blood, a less blood loss. I also don't use tourniquet. And uh, the skin, the skin cut is, non is very small. So less risk of infection, less pain, good mobility, because the concept of the uni is to recover the shape of, uh, of the joint because what we are cutting when we do the cut of the tibia and condyle, we replace with the implant. So we don't change the volume of the joint and the shape of the condyle. So we don't, we don't change the center of the rotation of the two condyles that are completely different. So we have a, um, and uh, we restore the original axis of the joint. This is important because we don't change uh, the varus or valgus too much we, we call, because we want that the uh, load, the weight bearing load is a little bit more on the uni to preserve the contralateral side. So the benefit of the uni is, as I was saying, the preservation of a knee epicondyle line. So the eastern center of a rotation of the two condyle that is completely different is not modified. So the range of motion is completely recovered by the uni. We improve the patellar tracking because when we correct the deformity, especially the rotational deformity of the femur, the patellar tracking will improve. And of course, we have to correct the deformity of varus and uh, valgus. So the surgical technique is not difficult, but the surgeon needs to be a little bit skilled because this is much more difficult than a total knee because you have to put a, a, a uni, so a new implant that need to work in harmony with the rest of the joint. So it's important how you cut the tibia and how you cut the femur to have a good joint motion. So this is um, something that is important to know, but thanks to the new implant, uh, this concept is important. That the load we uh, weight bearing, the load should always stay in the center of the tibial plate. Because if this load will move laterally, the risk of loosening is very high. So thanks to the new shape of the femoral condyle that is a little bit convergence and follow the condyle, we will have inflection and in extension, always the load weight bearing in this, in this area. So no risk of tilting. It's important, of course, to uh, follow the slope of the patient and to clean posteriorly very well, otherwise the risk of loosening is high. And what is good, we have a full recovery of the range of motion, inflection and extension, and also in rotation. So these are important. Let's see the right indication for sure the evaluation of the patient is the first step. And then the X-ray finding are important to decide which kind of surgery is correct. So <clears throat> in the stage one, we will see that we will have a narrowing of the joint line where we have the deformity, varus or valgus. In second stage, we will have the disappearance of the joint line relative to an insufficiency, insufficiency of the medial ligament apparatus caused by osteocartilage defect. Stage three, <clears throat> we will have a posterior medial defect of the tibial plate, insufficiency of LSA anterior cruciate ligament, misalignment of extensor apparatus and rotational arthrosis deformity. And stage four, is the stage three plus the absence of the ACL. 
So here we can see stage one. So we see that, <clears throat> that we have a narrowing of the joint line. And in this case, according to the age, if it's too young, we can consider the osteotomy. But in my opinion, over 50, because uh, of the, I think, uh, uh, <clears throat> as the uni, the recovery of the uni is faster than uh, an osteotomy, over 50, also in stage one, we can consider the uni. In the stage number two, uh, we have the disappearance of the joint line, how we can see, and the uh, uh, insufficiency of the ligament apparatus in the middle side. So in this case, for sure, the osteotomy cannot make a full correction of this defect and the uni is the best indication. Stage three, uh, for sure, we have the, to implant the uni because we have a medial defect of the tibial plate and with a, a slight insufficiency and misalignment of the extensor apparatus. In this case, osteotomy cannot fix the problem. So stage three, uh, stage, stage four is a uh, stage three plus uh, the ACL uh, absence. In this case, I think my uh, experience, I will never implant a, um, a uni because the risk of bad result is very high. So how we saw in stage one, osteotomy under 50 is still a valid solution, but we need to consider this. Osteotomy can correct only two plane while the uni is replacing. The cartilage makes a three dimensional correction because we work inside the joint and we fix the defect. The ostomy, osteotomy works here, outside the, jo the, um, the joint and not inside. So the contraindication, <clears throat> age under 50, <clears throat> over <clears throat> overweight, absence of uh, the one of the two cruciate ligaments, severe laxity, of medial and collateral ligaments, severe patella <coughs> femoral degeneration, and um, osteoarthritis uh, uh, based on uh, autoimmune disease. So the failure of the uni was the one uh, of the mm, case of failure was the, the lamination of the polyethylene. Don't forget that in the beginning, the polyethylene quality was very poor. Uh, we have uh, also the malposition of the implant responsible of failure. The arthrosis of the upside side, and this is when you do overcorrection, so you will overload the control, <coughs> control side joint. Patella femoral pain <clears throat> and ligament instability and infection. These are the main risk of failure, the main cause. So in conclusion, we can say that the uni is a mean invasive techniques that gives good result when the indication are followed, comparing to the osteotomy as some advantage, especially regarding the three dimensional correction of the mechanical axis. I want to finish uh, speaking about the concept of kinematics. Because the uni is the only knee arthroplasty that respects the joint. So we are not changing the functioning and the ligament balancing. We are not changing the uh, radius, instant radius um, flexion radius, rotational radius of the femur. So we are restoring completely the joint. This is kinematic. Kinematic surgery is when you recover the full function of the joint. Thank you. <laughs>